Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Beautiful Friday to be in the presence of the Lord. God is good. God is good. I know, I know he is, and he's ever good. Tonight he'll be good again to us in Jesus' name. Let's please bow our heads to pray as we get ready to hear the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everlasting Father, we are firm the fact that you are always good. And this night as we come, Father, to eat from the table you prepare for us, that the goodness of yours will still continually flow in our lives in Jesus' name. The shelter, the protection you care for the righteous, we will abide within it. No weapon of the enemy formed against us will get at us in Jesus' name. Build us up to believe you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Psalm number 27, we are going to look at verse 5. Psalm 25 in verse 5. And we are taking the topic that says God's pavilion for the righteous. God's pavilion for the righteous. If you don't know the, meaning, the spelling of that word pavilion, go with me to Psalm 27. You are going to see it there in verse 5. Psalm 27 in verse 5. For in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Praise the Lord. As you look at this psalm, by the way, who wrote that psalm from your Bible? Are you able to know who wrote it? Who? King David, thank you so much. And the purpose of this verse of scripture or psalm we have read from the perspective of the writer is to make you know that there's a special reservation God makes for the righteous in times of trouble. And the emphasis is on the righteous. Who is the righteous? A born again child of God, a person that has righteousness of God, somebody that has relationship with God the Father by virtue of living life of victory over sin. David the author. To let you know that this psalm and what he's about to talk about relates to the righteous and for him because he's written in the personal. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me. He started by showing us his relationship with God in verse 1. In verse 1, he says, the Lord is my light and my what? Salvation. That's being saved. Living righteous life. He is your salvation. So, uh, David made it clear himself, writing in verse 5, is a partaker of what God provides here. With that said, go back again to verse 5. In Psalm 27, verse 5, you will see that it begins with a setting. It says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the time of trouble, this particular staff works for me. In the time of trouble, you know, like we have in this auditorium, there are lit exit signs for exit, emergency exits. What do you make emergency exit for? For time of trouble. Secret bunkers against um, bombs and so on. Why do you prepare them? against the time of trouble. So this psalmist is saying, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me where? In his pavilion. What is pavilion? What does he mean? That God will hide me in his pavilion. Pavilion in the literal natural sense. It's usually a projecting subdivision of a building. The building is standing. Then you have the subdivision, the little one, 
that's a pavilion added to it, is highly decorated, standing in a distinct position from the main house. But it becomes a shelter for anyone that wants to leave the main house. Maybe the main house is burning or whatever is happening. You just want to go to that pavilion side, set aside, distinct but well decorated, attached to the building itself. Now, this psalm is saying, wherever you are in this world, in your family, in your community, in any place, and trouble comes, God has set out a pavilion for you. He will take you out there as far as you're a righteous person and then go and put you in a secluded place called his pavilion for your protection. This night he's taking you there in Jesus' name. I said you are going to God's pavilion tonight in Jesus' name. And the next question becomes, where literally is the location of this pavilion in the scheme of God's own events, things? Where is it? Is it really secure enough? Is it something I am going to trust? Is it something that is really workable? Get back to Psalm 27. Of course, you are still there. I've not gone on to other places. We'll still go around. But let's still stay there and get something. The question, remember, is where is the location of this pavilion? Get back to Psalm 27. I want to give you an assignment. If you're able to pick with me and answer with me the exact location, because that location is right there in Psalm 27, verse 5. Look at it. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Who will tell me where that pavilion is? Oh, I'm so happy. You are good Bible students. Look at it. The location is in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me me that's where he takes you and that's where the location of god's own tabernacle or pavilion is in the secret of his own tabernacle it is that place and i'm telling you on the authority of the word of god brethren when god takes you to his pavilion tonight and that pavilion is located in the secret of his tabernacle and he hides you there no person, no power, no destructive force, no evil power, nothing. Even Satan himself personally coming out, he will never touch you at all in Jesus' name. You know, Paul had a little revelation about this secret of his tabernacle. And what did he say in the epistles? He said, my life is hid with Christ in God. That's the secret of his tabernacle. In most chambers, he takes a believer, he puts that believer there, and that believer is secure. You will be secure from tonight in Jesus' name. Am I theorizing? Brethren, I'll go through with you in the Bible. You are going to see people, flesh and blood like me and you. That literally, they're living like us. People see them. But God used them as examples to demonstrate what we are talking about. If he decides to take you out the more, and put you in his secret tabernacle, you become a case of the more they look, the less they see. They will put on their armor and regalia. Let's go and get this brother. Let's go and get this sister. We're going to do this. And when they come, you are there before their eyes. The more they look, the less they see. Henceforth, that will be your lot in Jesus' name. Let's see examples. Remember somebody like David, the writer. I wanted to pick him first as an example before we go to other examples of people God hid in the secret of his tabernacle, in the pavilion, secret of his tabernacle. And let's pick him because he's writing about what really happened to him. He's a man God said is after my heart. His righteousness is, is beyond doubt as to that. 
and look at what happened. I looked at David and I said, what? Where do I begin? How do I get it and push it to our brethren for them to have a pinch of conviction about what I am talking about tonight? I said, okay, it's a lot to talk about, but let's settle on just one chapter in the books that talked about David. First Samuel chapter 23, just one chapter. And you see where God demonstrated how he could hide one in the secret of his, in the pavilion he has made for the righteous. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, everybody please go there. 1 Samuel chapter 23, reading first and foremost, I'll read verse 24. Then I'll read verses 26 to 28. 1 Samuel chapter 23, are you there? As you are there, open it also. Look at it as I'm reading it. First Samuel chapter 23, look at uh, verse 14. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. Pause a moment. Wilderness. He was running from Saul. In the wilderness, open place, no hiding place at all. And it's a stronghold. And it says, wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day. Can you read the rest with me? One, two, go. But God delivered him not into his hand. Did God remove him from the desert? Oh, that's pavilion. He kept him hidden in plain sight. He will hide you. God will ever hide you against the schemes of the wicked one in Jesus' name. Look at verses 26 to 28 from verse 26. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take then, verse 27, but. Is there a but in your own? But. That's where God comes in. There came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore, Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore, they called that place Selema, Sel Selahama Lekots. Point of departure and point of hiding in the pavilion of God. You will have that point tonight in Jesus' name. Has that God changed? I mean, are you sure he's still alive? And what he did for David, he can do for you? That's all I needed to hear from you. But let's take another example, Jeremiah. This man, it was like battle royale. The king, from the king level, because he was preaching righteousness, they said, no, the king made sure he sent out a decree to get Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 25, yeah, 36 rather, in Jeremiah chapter 20, 36, verses 25 and 26, Jeremiah chapter 36, they made every effort. In fact, this one was led by the king, the highest man in the land. Because Jeremiah was preaching righteousness, propagating the word of God. And they say, this man is marked for elimination. He's disturbing us. In Jeremiah chapter 36, and you see pavilion, the practical demonstration of that. In Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 25 and 26. I read, I read. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he will not burn the rule. But what happened? He will not hear them. The word of God that Jeremiah wrote and disclosed to the king, the king tore it apart and put in fire. They were pleading, don't do that. As if it's not enough. Look at what the king now did. Verse 26. But the king commanded Jeremiah, the son of Hamelech, and Seraiah, and uh, the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdel, 
to take Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. Can you read the last one with me? But the Lord hid them. Where did he hide them? Remind me again. In his pavilion, the secret place of his tabernacle, he hid them. They would have been seeing him. They knew where Jeremiah was. But there's no way they could get him. Why? God already hid him. From tonight, God will be hiding you from all the machinations of the enemy in Jesus' name. You set out the specs you are going to fall. At the end, they open up and they are eyes and they see you among those succeeding. Why? God hid you, removed you from their evil enterprises. It shall be so always for you in Jesus' name. Do I go on with more examples? No. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, let's talk about Elijah the prophet. In 1 Kings chapter 17, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 9. 1 Kings chapter 17. And you see another classic example of God hiding us in his own pavilion. God's pavilion for the righteous. 1 Kings chapter 17. Reading from verse 1. Reading from verse 1 down to 19. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by, look, you see it, hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. He gave him a specific location. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and have commanded, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. That's the hiding place God set aside for Elijah. Let's continue reading. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, I have another hiding place. Look at it. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Look again at verse 9. He told him, go to Zarephath that belonged to whom? Sidon. I want you to mark that word, Sidon. Zidon, actually Z or S, depending, but Z, Zidon, Zidonians. If you look at that place and you will turn back, by the way, who, who was the king of Israel at the time Elijah came on Mount Carmel and came and said there will be no rain? Who? Who? Who was he? Ahab, thank you. Who was he married to? Jezebel. Remember that wicked queen that was engineering everything? Now, thank you. Let's go where, somewhere. So that you see what I'm talking about, being hidden in plain sight. God took him back to the enemy's domain, stronghold. Even though God said, I'm hiding you there, he's putting him before the enemy in his own camp. Look at uh, verse 9. And then turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 31. All of us are going to read it. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 31. To see this God, I'm telling you, the more you look, the less you see. If you're a righteous person and they are plotting anything against you, and God makes up his mind, 
I want to hide this person in my pavilion. Who dare to countenance that? In 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 31. Are we there? One, two, go. Let's read it. And it came to pass as if it had been a live thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebah, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Edbar, king of what? Sidonians. And went and served Baal and worshipped him. You see that Sidonians. S there. And if turn to chapter 17, verse 9, Sidon means Sidonians, people from Sidon. So what did God do? He took Elijah and said, go to the village of Jehab, uh, Jezebel. Go and stay there. I want to hide you in open view. Who will tell me the world is so corrupt, I can't trust her. The world, um, enemies, arrows are flying all over. It's so, the, the security system is collapsing. God will keep you. He will keep you against all us in Jesus' name. Oh, COVID is ravaging everywhere, and this and that and that. Who is the author of COVID? Who controls where COVID goes? Because you're a righteous person, he controls everything that crosses your path. He provides a pavilion for you. No one will penetrate and touch you in Jesus' name. I'm not yet done. I was looking at the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. I say, where do we begin and where do we end? But I said, okay, let me tonight just give you a few examples about it. Because in his earthly ministry, the Lord demonstrated exactly what it means to be hidden in open sight. And he said, I did this. Greater ones are you going to do? You saw it in my ministry. Everything I've taught you, go and display and do. So that when you are reading, you're not saying, well, he's the son of God. I am not qualified. No. He is hiding you in plain view. He has made up his mind. You want to cut the vision tonight? No one will get you and harm you in that pavilion of the Lord in Jesus' name. Luke's Gospel chapter 4. Let's go there and begin. And see where Jesus demonstrated what it really means to be hidden in God's pavilion. Luke chapter 4, reading verses 28 to 30. Luke's Gospel chapter 4, reading from verse 28 down to 3-0. And all day in the synagogue, when they had these things, what happened? We are filled with rot and rose up and thrust him out of the city. They had him with him. They pushed him out of the city and led him. They, they held him captive. It's not that he was able to get out there because they were leading him to secret pavilion and led him into the brow of the hill where their city was built. That what will happen, they might cast him down headlong. They didn't know there's a secret pavilion. There's a pavilion God made. Look at verse 30. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. You will pass through. You will go your way. That blessing God has reserved for you, nobody is taking it in Jesus' name. The scripture tells us he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. I've seen a practical demonstration of this which you read about Jesus Christ in the ministry of Reinhard Bonke. I remember vividly hearing or reading it from his account about what happened, but it's from my nation in Nigeria. You see that he came from, he, he had a crusade he was going to go for in the northern part of that nation called Kano. And there was this riot a night before it was to start for him to destroy everything, for it not to work. And for he just flew in. He never knew about it. Left his hotel room and left town and then was going back again. They mounted security checkpoints everywhere. He was in one of the cars. And they were armed, destroying things and saying, this crusade will not happen. This man, if you see him, we are going to kill him. He stopped. They stopped with the car. And you can imagine only white man in a car. Blacks are occupying. They were saying, 
this man we're looking for. He was asking them, what's happening? He said, oh, this could say we're not hold. We want to kill that man. That man that is behind, we're going to. He was looking at them. They didn't even see him at all. They said, okay, Kapas, we're waiting. We're looking for the man. And that was how he passed on and left that vicinity. It's real what we're talking about. And don't say it's because Jesus Christ did this or that. We'll show you an example of David, the example of Jeremiah, Elijah, and all more. There are a lot more about our Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord is saying, do you have faith enough? You will have faith enough to believe him tonight in Jesus' name. Because the next phase is for us to look at concrete promises God has made for you. You in particular concerning the pavilion he has made for you. These are perilous times. Evil days are rising. Normal things, abnormal things are happening. And believers tend to now look unto those things that are appearing and they are losing their faith in God. But I want to strengthen you again. Show you God's reaffirmation of the promises he has made for, he has made for you concerning the pavilion he has made available for you. And you will walk on them. Nothing will come upon you in Jesus' name. Job chapter 5. Let's go to the book of Job. Job chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 19. Job chapter 5. You see how God goes out. Wrote this thing ahead of time. I'll tell you, forget David. Forget this other person. This is my own assurance. Look at the great promise I am making for you regarding the pavilion I am preparing for you. In Job chapter 5. I am going to read from verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19, down to 24. It says from verse 19, He shall deliver thee in what? Six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Seven days of the week. He wanted to make it uh, six. Remembering the other one, Sunday, the dependence, some is the last day, some the first day. Sunday, maybe to remove it because um, they will know you are in church. But he said, no, the enemy doesn't sleep, so I wouldn't sleep also. I would have made it six days, but now seven days, no evil shall touch thee. I was waiting for the amen. Seven days, no evil shall touch thee. Amen? But as if that's not enough, we now see him breaking it down. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. Amen? And in war, from what? The power of the sword. Amen? Verse 21. Thou shalt be what? Hid from the scourge of the tongue. You know, people can use tongue and congratulate you, spoil, raise your high blood pressure. If you want, what? Somebody saying this to me. And God said, there's a pavilion for that. When the bullet from the tongue starts raining and raining, you just be looking at them. At the end, nothing will stick. It goes out. You will rest. Sleep very well. You don't reflect on it at all. He said that you will be healed from the scourge of the tongue. That will be your hiding place in Jesus' name. Neither shall thou be afraid of what? Destruction when it Comet, amen. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Nothing. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. You know what this is saying? God, the Bible is so wonderful. There are people you hear the, in the night, they are stepping out, a snake bites them. And before you know it, they pass on to eternity. Or that there was a roaring lion that just came out and did this and that, that. Or they are driving in the highway. A deer came out and then killed them. God is saying, when my righteous servant is on the highway, when my righteous servant is stepping on the road, those demonic beastly animals and objects that could have come out, I'll just keep them aside. Because my own servant, my own child is passing. You are that child of God. He will preserve you in Jesus' name. Do you believe what I'm telling you tonight? You really believe that? Act like you do. Because these are revelations God is giving to you. Look at uh, verse 24. 
and thou shalt know that what? Thy tabernacle shall be in peace. There'll be commotion outside. When you get into that secret pavilion, peace comes and reigns and takes over you in Jesus' name. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thy offspring as a grass of the field. Verse 26. Thou shalt, oh, read that with me, one, two, go. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age. Like I say, shock of corn cometh in in his season. Bye bye to untimely dead. Not in your camp at all. Not in the camp of your family in Jesus' name. Our God is good. In Acts of Apostles chapter 18, this one is written in a personal way. And you can come and you are saying, oh, I'm all alone. There is nothing. What will happen? This one and the other one. Acts chapter 18, verses 9 and 10. Acts chapter 18, verses 9 and 10. In verses 9 and 10, it says, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Instead of Paul, put your name. He's speaking to you tonight in a vision in Jesus' name. What did he speak? He said, be not afraid, my daughter. Be not afraid, my son. Be not afraid, my children. But speak and hold not thy peace. Verse 10, let's read it together. One, two, go. I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Amen? That's it. He will work out something that will make it possible. No one will hurt you. You will never be hurt in Jesus' name. So Jeremiah have made you a defense city. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail. That you are going to crush them. And God meant what he is saying. Do you know what? Finally, before we come to winding down and praying, look at Zechariah chapter 2. What God said he has made about you. Zechariah chapter 2, reading in verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2, in verse 5. And see, precious provision, God said he has made sure to insulate you with. And when God is like that, I mean, what will happen? How would they cross over? In Zechariah chapter 2, in verse 5, it says, For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of what? Fire about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. He said, a wall of fire about you. A man of God was giving testimony, I had it, about when... These people from occultic world, sometimes they try to permeate and then do some diabolic things and they feel they pick a man of God or servants of God or children of God. And in this occasion, they send the powerful one to now go and get him and do something when he's sleeping. And she says she came, made every effort. Do you know what he saw? The man of God in a bowl of fire. Like a little baby you kept in the place with two babies, but fire all around them. And the baby was soundly asleep. The power could not penetrate the fire, and the fire is not burning the child. And the assignment sent to that, that person went to do nothing. It became of no effect. That's a demonstration of it here. God said, I'll be unto you a wall of fire round about. He will be that wall of fire for you in Jesus' name. Your family, your business, everything about you, he'll be that wall of fire in Jesus' name. Now, let me tell you something from the scriptures also, because sometimes you might be looking and saying, I. Pastor, but there is still some little thing. They are, really, they are ganging up. I'm seeing the whole thing, the way it's playing out. Oh, Pastor, maybe this one. I don't know what. I don't. I'm on fire now. And then, uh, where is that pavilion? How is it gonna work? We are ending on a final note. And I'm telling you by the word of God, you are going to laugh last in Jesus' name. The present turmoil that's boiling, it will result in laughter. He that laughs last, laughs best. That's what the Englishman says. He that laughs last, laughs 
best. You are going to laugh last in Jesus' name. In fact, that's your laughter the last time, the last laugh. You are not laughing it alone. You are laughing it with God because of what you are hearing tonight, which is building faith in you. And when the conquest comes and you start laughing, you look around, you see, ah, God is laughing with me. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Psalm number two. Let's see where God will laugh with you for the last. A last laughter with you. In Psalm number two, reading verses one down to four. Psalm two. Go there, please, everybody. Let's look at it and see how that glorious day is going to be. Psalm number two from verse one down to verse four. Psalm 2 from verse 1. Look at it. Because this psalmist was wondering. He said, what's happening? And God now recaptured the whole story for him. Look at from verse 1. Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against who? I don't know if you are in the same verse with me. They took counsel together against the Lord and against who? Who among you is anointed of the Lord? Can I see your hand up? <laughs> That's a child of God. They are taking counsel and the man was seeing it unfolding. And God, there's no way. It's sounding like Elisha's servant. We are lost. So look at all these people and so. And Elisha said, open his eyes. So God now stepped into the scene. Look at in the scene on verse 3. And that's what they were still saying. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their curse from us. Verse 4. Can we read it together? I want to go. He that seated in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. When they start laughing, you are laughing with him in Jesus' name. Book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 6. Luke, chapter 6. Look at verse 21. We are look, look, going towards the last bit of that verse 21. Luke, chapter 6. Not the first part, but I'll read the whole. But I'm concentrating on the second part in Luke, chapter 6, in verse 21. First part says, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for you shall be filled. That's not where we are going at. I'm looking at the middle portion, the last sentence there. Blessed are you that do what? Weep now, for you shall laugh. Your weeping shall be turned into laughter in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, your laughter is on the way in Jesus' name. John's Gospel, chapter 16. Don't worry, hang on there. You, God is taking you to that pavilion. Elijah, it took him time. Elijah, to go out there hiding from here to the other, eventually he laughed last. The same with you. In John's Gospel, chapter 16, look at verses 20 to 22. John, chapter 16, from verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Joy is on the way. Hang on there, God never fails. Verse 21, and we are going to up to 22. A woman, when she is in travel, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Verse 22. And you now, therefore, have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall do what? Rejoice. And your joy, no man take it from you. Amen? And your joy, no man take it from you. Amen? And your joy, no sickness take it away from you. And your joy, no evil man, no demonic power take it away from you in Jesus' name. Oh, brethren, these are cherished promises God has made available for us. Remember where we started from now. 
hiding you in his pavilion. And we told you where that pavilion is, in his secret tabernacle. And you see that these are demonstrated by people that were hidden in those tabernacles and shown also by promises God has made over and beyond those that we have read about. Open blanket, open check he has given you, and he's saying, my daughter, my son, do you have faith enough? If you're still not sufficiently motivated, let's read, cap up with Psalm 91. And in Psalm 91, you are going to see the crown of the promise, the peak of the promise of God for those he wants to put in his own pavilion. He says, I'm taking you tonight. When I put you in there, everything in Psalm 91 is playing out for you in real time. And when you have all these things, who is that demonic power? Who will stand against you? No one can stand against you in Jesus' name. Are you in Psalm 91? Look at Psalm 91. You see where it starts from. He that dwelleth where? In the secret place of the Most High. That's in the tabernacle, in the pavilion God already made. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You'll be there and you are throwing trajectories, saying, devil, I'm here. You are saying, Let, you are going to hear it. Look at what you say in verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. You will trust him in Jesus' name. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Because you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Because you are hid in his pavilion. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. It shall be so for you in Jesus' name. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Nor of the pestilence, whatever sickness it is, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Can you read verse 7 with me? A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, and they shall not come nigh thee. That's the promise of God for you in Jesus' name. Only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. Because he has put you in that pavilion. Because you dare to believe the word of God and know there's a pavilion for you. Because of that, what will happen? No evil shall befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. Amen? For he shall give his angels charge over thee. So keep thee in all thy ways. Amen? Oh, these are great, great. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Amen? No dashing of feet against stone in Jesus' name. Oh, I told you from that pavilion, you'll be throwing trajectories to the enemy, you'll be throwing arrows to the enemy, and God now commissions your feet to do that. Look at verse 7, starting. Thou shalt do what? Tread upon the lion and other. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Amen? Oh, wonderful. Because he has set his law upon me. Because you are a righteous child. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. He shall call upon me. And this is the night you will call upon him. He said, he shall call upon me. What will happen? I'll answer him. God is answering you tonight. Those burdens I'm telling you, God is taking them off tonight. You are getting into the pavilion of the Lord tonight. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16, one to go. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Do you believe that? Rise up and let's go to this God and tell God, I've read it in your word. 
I am doubting my doubts, oh Lord. I'm moving into that pavilion of the Lord tonight. Nothing is bringing me out from it, oh Lord. This is the choice promise you made for me, oh Lord. Your pavilion for the righteous people. Father, I'm entering it tonight. I'm entering it tonight. I'm entering it tonight, oh Lord. Nothing is standing on my way. Nothing is stopping me from enjoying the fullness of it, the full benefit of it, oh Lord. That pavilion is available for me. I am going there. Whatever they are using, they are using their tongue, they are using their secret weapons, they are using the astral projection, they are using demonic powers, they are using whatever tactics they are doing. I will be hidden in plain sight. I will be hidden in plain sight. The enemy will not find me. Like Jesus Christ, I will just walk out. Like Jeremiah, the Lord will hide me from them. All their plans and all their enterprise, none of them will happen. And the full potential of what God has made available for me, I am receiving. I am receiving. Are you praying like you believe that? Are you praying like you believe God is going to do it? Do it not just for you alone. Do it for your family. Do it for every member of your family. Open your mouth and call upon God. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, this is my promise, O Lord. This is what you made available for me, O Lord. Father, I am coming. I am coming. There's a pavilion you made available for the righteous. Lord, I am inheriting it. I am getting it tonight. I am not allowing any of them to fall down unfulfilled in my life, O Lord. You told me in the book of Job, yes, you are keeping me six days and even in seven days no evil shall come in my own camp no evil is coming oh lord no evil is coming oh lord look at david and god hid him David, Saul was looking for him all through in the wilderness. All of them were there. And the scriptures say, God hid him. He will hide you. He will hide you. He's hiding you. He will hide you. He will hide you. The pandemic and everything going on, uncertainties of the time, he will succor you. He will hide you. He will keep you safe and secure. He will keep you safe and secure. This is your time. This is your moment. He's keeping you. He is keeping you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Keep me, O oh Lord. Keep me. Keep me, O oh Lord. The promises you've made, O oh Lord, let them work for me and they will work for you. They will work for you because you set your affection upon him. Because you set your affection upon him, he said, I will deliver him and honor him. When you call upon me in this time, in this moment, call upon the Lord. Tell the Lord, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Pray. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Very important, very important. You are hidden in plain view. I'm telling you, you are expensive before God. God cherishes you. Only believe. No harm shall come upon you. Jesus said the hairs of your head are all numbered. Believe God. Believe God. Have faith in God. There's a pavilion you already made available for you. Let them be sending whatever projector. You'll be calm and cool. At the end of it, you will laugh last. You will laugh. You will laugh. Whatever is there that is adverse to you now is momentary. Time of rejoicing is coming. In Jesus' name we pray. He has given me victory. I will praise him Jehovah. He has given me victory. I will lift him. Has he given to you? Are you sure? Do you know where he has hidden you? He has given me victory. Lift him. This God, lift him high. Praise him. I will lift him one more time, giving me victory. Praise him. 
now praying. Go back to him and tell him, Lord, you've given me victory. I've asserted it. I've confessed it, O oh Lord. He has come to me. Nothing is going to remove it from me. Still call upon God and tell him, Lord, I believe. Yes, I believe. Help my unbelief, O oh Lord. You've given me victory. Tonight is my night of victory. I'm going right into that secret place of the Most High, into the pavilion God has made available for me. Lord, I'm going in there. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for the assurance from your word. We bless you for all these scriptures we share tonight. Lifting our hearts up concerning the pavilion, the secret place of the tabernacle, God, you've made available for the righteous. We are so grateful and we appreciate you for what our ears have had this night in Jesus' name. As we had it, O oh Lord, so shall it be for every one of us in Jesus' name. That your pavilion, we are taking refuge in it tonight. The tongues of the wicked one, the arrows of the demonic powers, none of the evil things the enemy has imagined will come upon us in Jesus' name. That pavilion is also a weapon of offense, O oh Lord. From there we shall tread upon the enemy. From there we shall walk unto the high places you've made available from us. From your pavilion, Father, we'll achieve all the heights you want us to achieve in ministry and in our secular work in Jesus' name. The peace that you give to your people in your pavilion, O oh Lord, is coming to us, coming to our family, coming to every member we've come in contact with in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, you said it that we are going to laugh last. And we are looking to that day. And we are looking and enjoying it, getting appetizer of it. But we know at the fullness of time, we are going to laugh with you last in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the Lord. We thank the Lord for tonight's blessings. Uh, let's take our offering before we say the grace. Let's bow down first and let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless all in name for tonight. For the blessing the Lord we have received. That God will continue to give us victory the powers of darkness. Nothing that the devil has planned to fulfill in our life. We have it, our victory from now on. And we're going to have testimonies in your life in Jesus' name. God Almighty, we are giving this token unto you. Lord, we pray that you sanctify it and bless it. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Alleluia. 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 Amen. Let's bow our heads. Uh, let's stand up on our feet and share the grace before we leave. The grace. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus.
shoulder. The mess of messy shuffle all, all the days of our life. Shuffle it, you know. 